So we put in place a government that owed its um, its position to the violence perpetrated by these neo-Nazis, even though people say, well, they were a minority uh, when you know, the Bolsheviks were a minority, but they were the most violent you know, of the of the uh, revolutionaries in, 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 in the Russian Revolution. Uh, they, they, they beat out the Mensheviks, you know, you're supposed, you're Mensheviks small, but they're actually bigger, but the Bolsheviks big, beat them out. Yeah. They beat out the social revolutionaries, they beat out Kerensky, they beat out everybody, uh, and, they, and they seize power. And these, these neo-Nazi right-wing affiliated people um, were able to leverage violence, political violence and real violence uh, into, you know, being the dominant force in Ukraine. And it's not me saying this. You, there's videotapes of their own leaders bragging about this, saying that, you know, you can't be a minority when you're the one holding the power. And these are the people that went into Odessa, terrorized the ethnic Russians, uh, stuffed 150 of them into the trade union building, set it on fire, killing nearly 50 of them, uh, beating others. Uh, and then they moved into the Donbass. And um, their seizure of Mariupol um, you know, has been ignored by the West, what, what they did in taking over Mariupol, the rape, the murder, the terrorism that was perpetrated against ethnic Russians in Mariupol. There's a reason why the Kharkov soccer club transformed itself into the Azov regiment. Azov being named after the Sea of Azov, uh, Mariupol located on that. When they seized Mariupol, they made that their headquarters. Yeah. And they made the suppression, yeah. the genocide, the murder of ethnic Russians their mission. And they did that mission from 2014 until 2022. They did it with a vengeance. Um, they, they, you know, and then they, they moved into all of Donbass. And this led to the ethnic Russians rising up and saying, we're not going to let this happen. Um, and then we have the situation we have, and there was a war uh, between fourteen and sixteen thousand people were killed from two thousand fourteen to two thousand twenty-two, ignored horrible. by the West. Um, and awesome. you know, and, and, and you know, I, I'm not saying there's you know, the, it, all the devils were on the one side and all the angels are on the other side. I'm not saying that. War brings out the worst in people, and I'm sure yeah. Yeah. that uh, there were atrocities committed by ethnic Russians uh, because. Again, we you, you saw this in Yugoslavia. I mean, how do you have a situation like Sarajevo where Serbs, Croats, Muslims are living side by side in peace for decades and suddenly overnight, um, all they want to do is slit each other's throat uh, and murder women, rape women, murder kids. Uh, how do you make that transition? It's a psychological thing that, that happens. It's based on hate. And so there was real hatred between the Ukrainians and the Russians. But for the Ukrainians, you know, it wasn't... Dennis Pushilin, who went on TV and said, every Ukrainian child is going to spend their life in a basement afraid of the shelling. That was uh, Poroshenko, the uh, president of Ukraine, that said this. Um, and now we know that, you know, the Minsk Accords, which were supposed to bring about peace, originally negotiated in 2014, Minsk II came in in 2015, uh, as part of the Normandy format. The Ukrainian government said that they would be part of this but they refused to get it ratified. Why? Hmm. One, because the Nazis said, if you ratify it, we'll kill you. <laughs> so Poroshenko was told, we'll kill you. And then Zelensky was told, we'll kill you. So you couldn't do that. Then we found out that even that was just a game. Um, Poroshenko was admitted. We never planned on implementing Minsk. It was always a sham. Minsk was designed to buy time so that NATO could train the Ukrainian military capable of pushing the Russians out of the Donbass and seizing Crimea. Um, this means that NATO was complicit in the war crimes committed by Ukrainians against ethnic Russians, that NATO was a party to this conflict from 2015 onwards. So this isn't something that just happened in 2022. This is something that's been going on since 2015, uh, you know, premised on, on a lie, a lie told by the Ukrainian government, a lie told by, the, uh, by NATO, uh, by Germany, by France, the Normandy format, by the European Union. You know, everybody was lying. There was only one side. And again, I, I'm going to get, you know, excoriated for saying this, but there was only one side that was uh, actually being um, honest in this process, and that's the Russians. How can you say that, Scott? Isn't Vladimir Putin the most horrific human being ever born? <laughs> no. Um, but I will also say this, that when the ethnic Russians of the Donbass declared their independence, they petitioned Russia to recognize their independence. And Putin said, no, you guys are part of Ukraine, that we need a settlement that respects the territorial integrity of Ukraine. 
you know, that's sort of a weird position for a leader to take when everybody claims that he wants to create the new Soviet Union by having Russia move in and seize Ukraine. Uh, he apparently was the only one fighting for the territorial integrity of Ukraine, um, legitimate territorial integrity. He's fighting for, you know, autonomous rights for the Russians as they as they needed. I mean, think about what's going on in Ukraine today and what's been going on since 2014. Just close your eyes for a second. As I say, you know, they're outlawing the Russian language. They're outlawing Russian culture. They're outlawing Russian writers. They're outlawing everything Russian. And now just imagine I've replaced the word Russian with Jew. Right. It's, it's very clear to see the atrocity. The, the yeah, atrocity yeah, is very clear. It's, 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 it's there. And remember, it's, it's not a big stretch because the guys making this Russian policy are ideologically linked to Stepan Bandera, the guy who fought alongside the Nazis in World War II. Yeah, collaborator. Who, whose minions uh, butchered tens of thousands of Jews. Uh, Bobby Yar, the trigger men were all Bandera's people. Uh, 200,000 went on to fight for the Germans in Nazi military formations. And then after World War II, the Bandera movement slaughtered over 120,000 Polish civilians and nearly 200 plus thousand Russian civilians. They called the Poles and the Russians subhumans, subhumans. This is the mentality that exists today in many parts of Ukraine, the Western Ukrainians, uh, the pro Bandera movement. We should never forget that the people we claim are. You know, democratic in nature and freedom loving people are nothing more than the most prejudiced, anti Semitic, um, you know, so called super race uh, around. These are people who view the Poles as subhumans. They view the Russians as orcs. They call them orcs. 